hello guys welcome to the dms online school in today's video i'm going to look at this question which one of my students online had to send to me asking how i can help her to answer this question so i've decided also to post it on my youtube channel so that uh, your subscribers can benefit from it all right so if you this video is going to be helpful give it a like and let me know also in the comment uh, section so without further ado let's go straight into the revision so we have this question this question is coming from um, a topic known as a separation technique and the subtopic is paper chromatogram or chromatograph so the question says the question says um, the diagram below represents a paper chromatogram of three sugars where we have um, K, M, and N. So this is a paper chromatogram. A paper chromatogram is a sheet of paper or, or it can be maybe um, filter paper which shows the colors when they separate during the uh, chromatogram. So a chromatogram is just um, a it's just a paper, or rather a filter paper, which shows the separation of um, colors during paper chromatograph. So we have sugars, this is sugar M, N, and D, N. They were actually placed on this line here. Okay, so this line, they, they placed this one here, this one also here, and this one here. And then after some time, these separated into this. So M separated into this, then K separated into that, then uh, N separated into that. Okay. So this line is actually called the start line. We call it start start line, or we also call it our pencil pencil line because we use a pencil to draw this line. And because why we use a pencil because a pencil does not dissolve in a solvent and so it doesn't contaminate the results okay so the first question says state the most soluble sugar so from km and n mkn we need to state which one of these three was soluble so the one which was soluble is the one that had to travel the longest distance from the from the step start line so this is the start line the one that traveled the furthest from the start line becomes the one which is more solvent so in this case the one which traveled the furthest from the start line is n when you compare this distance from here and this one from here and this one from here you discover that this one is far from more they start and therefore it is the one which is the most soluble so when they say state the most soluble sugar you say you can say sugar sugar n just like that you get your one mark then b they are saying on the chromatogram above on this chromatogram here uh, indicate the solvent front so they needed you to get the solvent front here so the solvent front is a line which we draw here on which uh, the solvent or the mobile solvent that we use reaches the furthest that uh, the mobile phase we put here or the solvent that we use which helps us to separate these the furthest it moves from the start line that is where we draw the what we call the solvent front. So this one they said on the uh, on the chromatogram above indicate the solvent front. So we can label it like this. So we say that one is the solvent front like that. That is all. Then you see the same the three sugars K M and D and are colorless what should be done to the chromatogram to make them visible so here what we do is we apply what we call the locating agent even when they gave this question to max i think i don't know what they wanted but when you are using 
when the the substances you are using are colorless and you want them to to be visible you sprinkle or you apply the solvent uh, the locating agent on the chromatogram so you say they can be made visible by applying a locating agent so they can be made visible by adding a locating agent on the chromatogram. Okay, that is how they can do it. So this can be colorless. When they separate, they don't appear. So when you apply a locating agent, locating agent, then it can make this to be visible. So we come to D, explain how chromatograph can be used to identify false banknotes or forged D paper money. So chromatograph is very important in, in forensic studies, in scientific forensic studies because it is used by scientists to catch thieves, uh, to identify criminals, and then also to identify forged uh, money or banknotes. So in such a situation, if the same explain how chromatograph can be used to identify false banknotes or forged paper money. So here you can just say different ink inks, sample inks from original money and suspected money are put on a pencil line on a on a filter paper or what we call a stationary phase and then a a solvent is applied and then these are separate. Then there are distances from the the what there are distances from the start line are determined. If their distances are not the same, then the money can be considered to be uh, fake. So in terms of writing you can say samples from a uh, suspected Suspected forged <laughs> banknote and original original banknotes are placed. Only a stationary phase. Stationary phase. Then a mobile phase. A mobile phase is applied. To the sample. So after some time, after some time, the samples separate and if their distances from start line are determined. So, if the distances Are not the same, so 
if the distances are not the same the same comma then then the money is forged the suspected money bank not is forged we are saying then the suspected bank note is forged that's how we do these things eh? so that's how you can answer this question from paper chromatograph of course i have a lesson on paper chromatograph where you can understand what i'm talking about here in detail so if you are not in my online group you can join me on the line which is 0977 0977 92 41 75 to join my online tuitions for science so you can whatsapp me on that line or call me on that line daily you make the required payment then you'll be added to the learning group where you can find other lessons that are talking about this if you are interested to know more about this. For now, bye and see you in the next lesson. Peace.